Within the last year, over 21 million adults have reported major depressive episodes. And this number just continues to increase as we see rates like we have never seen before. But often we know why we're depressed, especially if we're in situational depression. That is like if you're in an abusive relationship and you're depressed from being in this relationship. Um, so you may know what's happening. But in this video, I'm going to talk about 12 reasons why you're so depressed that you may not have investigated yet. Getting to the root cause of depression and healing it is a powerful goal to carry. And if this is your goal, then listen up and hear if any of these reasons might resonate with you. I'm Dr. Meg Hayworth, and I'm a transpersonal psychologist and holistic nutritional chef. I help successful women survivors of abuse and difficult childhoods to heal the connection between what happened to them and how their body is expressing through illness and persistent symptoms today. So let's get started. So reasons why you're so depressed, 12 reasons. The number one reason is you're living for someone else. So you're living your life for someone else. And to give you an example of this, say everybody in your family, pretty much everybody is doctors. Um, so everybody becomes a doctor. You're expected to become a doctor. You have the intelligence to become one, but it's not what you really want to do. It's not how you really want to live your life. Maybe you're an artist and that's what you really want to do, but you're being discouraged from following the path of your heart because it won't pay the bills. Um, or that's the assumption that's being made. Um, so you're living for someone else. You're following someone else's expectations and rules. It could be a, a, an organization uh, that you're associated with that wants you to live a certain way and it just doesn't feel right for you. Um, or a community that you're in doesn't feel right for you, a family you're in. And so that can cause major depression because you're not honoring yourself. Number two, you have unresolved trauma. This is probably the most obvious of uh, reasons for depression. So that means you're holding that emotional experience in your body and you may think to yourself, well, oh, Dr. Meg, I've done so much work on my trauma and I get it. I mean, I did 15 years of traditional psychotherapy before I found transpersonal psychology. It is, uh, it's, it's quite a ride going through healing trauma. Um, and personally, I had physical, sexual, and emotional abuse as a child, and that has definitely fueled my depression um, and that I don't have anymore. Sometimes I do have moments or times where I feel a little depressed because I'm going through something, but it's totally different than having a long-term depression, which is exactly what I had. So healing that, looking for another modality that may be helpful for you, trying something different than what you've tried before. If you feel like you've kind of hit a wall with traditional psychotherapy um, or other therapies you've tried, just keep trying because it's worth the effort. Um, my whole person integration technique is what I use to help people release that emotional energy from the body. And I've seen incredible things happen overnight using this. It's exactly why I became a transpersonal psychologist. Number three, you're not being true to yourself, which really kind of piggybacks on number one. Um, being true to yourself, listening to the call of your heart, and following that is critical. Um, and, and it may be that there's some area of your life that you're just ashamed of, like you just don't want anyone to know that you feel a certain way, or you want to live your life a certain way. And it's really kind of torturing you. So you're just keeping it all in, you're tamping it all down because you're afraid of how other people are going to treat you. A lot of people go through this and it's really tough to go through. And if you are going through this, seek help. There's all kinds of support groups that can help you through things like this. There's all kinds of ways for you to be able to live your authentic life. So set out to find those ways that will help alleviate your depression if this is what's happening for you. Number four, the food you're eating is toxic. I have a video on my channel about foods that create anxiety and depression. So please go watch that and investigate this part of your life. This is really important for me personally. I had uh, allergy to gluten that was so severe that when I would get it, I would have extreme anger. I would have extreme depression. I would just be crying for what seemed like no reason. I would have road rage. I had all these issues that I would just get triggered into the side of me that it's just something that 
you know, I, I don't, I'm typically not like that at all, um, but it, it would get triggered from gluten. So just start looking into that because this is a really important piece of why our society is so depressed because everybody's eating a lot of the same stuff and it's not real food in many cases. So there's a lot more on my channel about that as well. So you, so delve into that, look into that. If this this uh, could be one aspect of why I find often that it's many aspects. It's not just one. And um, while I'm thinking about it, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the bell for notica notifications so that you can get future videos. Because uh, I would love to uh, be able to help you along the way of your own healing path. Number five, pharmaceutical drugs. Pharmaceutical drugs can throw your body off of its own natural rhythm. And part of the reason is that there are different chemicals called excipients in the drugs that can cause side effects, which we all know of. I mean, I have to do is turn on the TV and watch one of those commercials, you know, where they're, you know, calmly saying, and death, and death, six times in one commercial for uh, a potential a side effect. And so they have really normalized side effects. Like this is just what happens. But what can happen is you can get a side effect from a drug and then you have to get another drug to help uh, an issue that arises from the side effects. So then you're just getting more and more drugs. And this is exactly one of the things that happened to me. I was getting more uh, conditions as a result of the drugs I was taking. And so look into this because this could be happening in you and it doesn't have to. Personally, I'm off of all nine pharmaceutical drugs drugs that I was on 25 years ago. Um, and I haven't been on anything regularly since. I have used a couple of rounds of antibiotics here and there for conditions that I couldn't help with, with herbal medicine, which is my primary go-to way of helping to heal myself. So look into that. That could be part of what's throwing off your body chemistry and creating a more depressive situation in your body. Number six, you have no spiritual life. A spiritual life doesn't mean you have to run out and join a religion. I, I don't advocate that if that's something that you're really just not into at all. But a spiritual life is really feeling connected to something bigger than yourself, something greater than yourself. And one of the best examples of feeling a spiritual feeling is really being in nature, feeling that feeling of connecting with a tree, of connecting with a sunset, that expansiveness. So any way that you can get into that feeling of expansiveness can be really helpful for you. Mindfulness meditation is one way that you can do that, where you learn to just you focus on something happening in the room. You focus on the sound of a fan. Um, you focus on your own breathing. I have a, a video on my channel about meditation for opening up your intuition um, that can be really helpful for you. It's just a simple learning how to meditate. Um, it's really powerful and that can help you so much with creating a spiritual life or a spiritual connection to something beyond your five sensory world. Number seven, and this is a big one, you're holding on to resentments and anger from things that have happened in the past and you get tr easily triggered into anger and resentment today by things that happen, people say or people do. And that energy is really coming from past experiences um, and you can release that energy and let it go so that you don't have these emotions running your life. Um, this is something I find all the time in my practice is people have go-to emotions. So think about this, what we know from science, if you may have heard me say this before, is that when you feel an emotion, every single cell of your body registers that emotion. And so if you're registering anger regularly, this will drain your biology over time. Um, you, don't, you won't have enough energy to run your biology. And so think about that keeping down this energy of resentment and this energy of anger can uh, cause depression because you're not allowing these things that really just want to come up and out and be released. You're not allowing those to be released. And maybe you don't even know that you can. Um, that's one of the things that I do with my whole person integration technique um, in my private sessions with my clients is to help them release the energy of resentment, anger, pain, shame, sorrow from past events. And then I watch them change their current events. So it's pretty cool how we are 
wired and how there's all different kinds of modalities that can help people release depression and all kinds of other emotional patterns. Number eight, this one sounds really nebulous, but it's really important. You don't know who you really are. You haven't really investigated who you really are because again, you're living your life for someone else or you're living a five sensory life that is very much about the world around you. It's about stuff and money and acquisition of things. And that life will make you feel empty. I, when I was a private chef for celebrities, I, there were millionaires, multi-millionaires that I worked for that were so unhappy. They had every single thing in the world. They didn't have the connection to understanding who they really were. Um, and that, when you gain that, uh, this will help you so much. And this is something I assist my clients in, and I know it sounds nebulous, but there really is a pathway to adopting the who you really are. And that's something I help my clients with. Number nine, you're depressed because you are numbing yourself with alcohol, drugs, sex, shopping, computer time, anything that you need to do to numb yourself and tamp down the pain. Um, I know this one well. Um, drinking was one of my favorite things to do and uh, one of the things that I've overcome in my life. Um, and this is really important because it's not only the chemical from the 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 alcohol or the drugs um, that are in your system but it's also the constant repression of the emotions that's really at the core of it constantly repressing the things that are coming up for you to let go of um, and that's kind of what it comes down to is letting go of of it so check yourself are you numbing yourself because if you're numbing yourself with something or food, that's a big one. Um, if you're numbing yourself with something, then you uh, can be causing the depression even further because you're avoiding what needs to come up and out and what you're being asked to really look at and deal with. Number 10, you're making choices that are harming yourself and others. So when you make choices, for instance, that are manipulative, like you're manipulating and maneuvering others, to get a certain result, to get things the way that you want them. Instead of just being honest and being integrous with about what you want help with and being okay with, like maybe you won't get it. Sometimes we don't get everything that we wanna have. So choices that harm other people where you know that you're manipulating to get things the way that you want them or you're trying to make someone else look bad so that you feel better or there's all kinds of ways that you may be doing, making choices that are out of integrity with you um, or with the person that you're with. You know, it's like um, also uh, say you're, you're in a relationship with somebody you don't really love and that's dishonest. That kind of dishonesty can really make you depressed. And so look at your life honestly and, and what is it that you really want? And how is it that you really want to shift and change your life? Um, because that that is key. That's really important for you. Number 11, you're living a five sensory life that is disconnected from your intuition. Your intuition is your internal guidance system. You're using it all the time and probably totally unaware of it or it's trying so desperately to get to you. Actually, I don't think it tries desperately. I think we just ignore it. We get so involved in our five sensory world that we totally ignore our intuition. We basically cut ourselves off from it. Intuition is a current of the soul. It fuels your energy system and your energy system is the only thing you can't live without. You bring in that energy, you bring in that spirit when you come into this lifetime, into this body and you leave it when you go. Um, and while you're here, you can intentionally develop yourself by accessing and developing your intuition. It's the most powerful part of you and it's the part that's created just for you to guide you through your life. And the more you learn to follow this part of you, the better your life becomes. In my Evolving Intuition, Building Self-Trust for Life course, that's something that I help my clients, my students with. Um, it's for coaches, therapists, healers, and entrepreneurs uh, that work with transformation of others. And uh, I help to certify people in whole person integration technique in that course as well.
And so if you feel like you're disconnected from your intuition, getting connected with it and developing it, or if you have intuition that's just sort of like intuition gone wild and you don't know how to hone it, uh, you're getting all kinds of information from people um, and you and you don't know that you can actually learn to hone it and control it, I can teach you how to do that as well because that used to be one of my problems too. Ooh, it was tough. <laughs> so I feel you. Okay, so number 12, and this is a big one that kind of wraps up the whole thing. Number 12 is you're disconnected from your purpose. So if you're disconnected from your intuition, you're disconnected from who you really are, you're disconnected from your life, um, from what you really want and living that out in the world, your personal self-expression, when you're disconnected from all of those things, you will be depressed. Um, it's very depressing to not be living the life that you're meant to live, the life that you love, the life that you design. And I know you may be thinking, okay, uh, I, I don't even know what my purpose is. And I hear this a lot from people. And I think one of the ways to really kind of understand what your purpose is, is to, to really look at your skills, your talents, your abilities. What are you great at? What do people recognize you for? Your purpose is not a job. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's something big and lofty, you know, where you're, you create an organization that saves lives. Sometimes it's, it's, it seems really small, but having a purpose, having a reason to get out of bed every day, um, having something that makes you feel the goodness of who you are, of who you really are, that empowers you and that helps you feel strong. It helps you feel yourself. And there's no greater gift that you can give this world than to become a healed you and to offer yourself up to the world to help, to be of service to others through your own personal expression and, and again, don't think that purpose has to be a job. It doesn't have to be some sort of big mission. It could be your purpose is just that you're cheerful and lovely and your smile just lightens up people's days. So just start thinking about all of the things that I've said in this video. If anything resonates with you, um, then please follow that. You know, get to the root cause of why you're feeling depressed and um, weed them out, you know, and look at all the different reasons that could be contributing factors, because it might be all of this uh, wrapped up together, and often is. Um, so, and if you feel led to talk to me, I would love to talk to you. Uh, you can book a free call with me. The links are below in the description and in the comments. Um, and you can check out my website at meghayworth.com if you want to find out more about healing yourself using food and the power of the mind and heart. And, uh, and then also check out my book, Get Well Now, Healing Yourself with Food and the Power of the Mind. I have lots of resources there, uh, podcasts, um, uh, and a lot more videos on my channel. So please help yourself and let me know if I can help you. I hope this information will help you get well.